I remember the hotel, you all remember the hotel scene? They were like, hey, don't worry about it, girl. <laughs> all right, and one of the actors who played Toby in 11th Street Gang member, Mr. Robert Cora Buya. Buya. I don't know if I got the name right. That's a, a lot of art. Welcome, Robert. Please. Okay. And now one of the uh, BGV gang members, Mr. Daniel Alvarez. Give it up, please. But I think we next we have before Mr. Bill we have uh, one of the one of the musicians who contributed to the soundtrack, uh, Mr. Dr. Bobby Rodriguez. Yeah, Bobby. Dr. Bobby, please. We're just going to get a couple extra chairs here. Uh, so the producer of the film, Mr. Bill Bennington. Yeah! Mr. Bill, please join us. All right. And your moderator for this question and answer, one of the writer and the director and one of the other producers, Mr. Kenneth Castillo. Please welcome. All right, Kenneth. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is... DJ to groove me, and it's been an honor to be your MC here, DJ, for the evening. Thank you, thank you, Gentlemen, thank you, brother. Appreciate Give me it. Mic. Give me your mic. Wow, look at this. Oh, this mic? All right. We're switching mics. Give the other one to those guys. Give the other one to those guys. Thank wow, you. look at look at this. Los Angeles came out to see Boulevard Night. Yeah. A film that came out 40 years ago. Woo. 40 years ago, and did not get a lot of respect when it came out. And so true testament to something that has been made cinematic is that it has crossed multi-generations. And just recently they did a screening of this in Sacramento and they, they actually provided a proclamation from the senator. And I'd like to read just a little bit about what they said at that proclamation. It said, seen through hindsight's rearview mirror, nearly four decades later by present day viewers, critics, and activists, Boulevard Nights has earned a measure of hard-worn respect for its theatricality, its historical significance, and as an early and important cinematic exploration of lowrider and Chicano culture in East Los Angeles. And I thought that said a lot. Coming, this is coming later. You guys, you guys coming out and showing support and love for this film. Look at how many of the cast members we have here today. So I, I'm going to do my best to try to get Richard to sit down and not take pictures. Um, but I'm not sure how that's going to go. Uh, it was a great introduction. Uh, I want to talk a little bit uh, about how this came together. I'm going to start, uh, let's start with Bill. Bill was a producer on it with Warner Brothers. Um, and Bill, what, what was the, uh, the story you just shared with me about how quickly this came about? Well, uh, thank you for all being here and for celebrating this momentous occasion. And when we started, we had no idea this would happen. It came about quickly when we gave the script to the president of Warner Brothers, uh, Robert Shapiro, my partner, Tony Bill, who's done a lot of feature films as a producer, director, and actor, had, was, did uh, the sting, and when he handed the script to the president of Warner Brothers on a Friday, Inconceivably, on Monday, we were told, I was with Desmond Napano, the writer, that the film was going to be made. Yes. So this happened very quickly, but it took a couple of years to get the script right and get it brought to that place. And I think it was, it was groundbreaking at the time. There had been no film, feature film made by a studio in East LA. So this was sure. new. And Richard, when you got the script, what was your first impression of it, and what was the audition process like for you? And by the way, Roger Ebert said about Richard, plays the lead, gotcha, plays the lead role of Raymond, say again, sir? 
plays the lead, Richard Iñakis plays the lead role of Raymond Avila with an attractive authority. That was what Roger Ebert said in 1979. So how was it for you? Uh, you know, unfortunately, as you get older, you forget a lot of different details of your life. And uh, it turns out that Boulevard Nights, the audition process and so forth, I forgot, apparently, uh, uh, after discussing this with my fellow cast members, I forgot a lot of it. He doesn't remember it. shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Basically, in a nutshell. He's right. He's right. It's unfortunate. <laughs> but uh, I must tell it's you. It's like it never happened. No, no, no. Obviously, it did because I'm here. I, I, I just want to say, though, uh, uh, thank you all for, for being here. This is family. Yes. Somos familia. Yes. Estamos aquí porque nos queremos. The, the film represents who we are as a family. And, and I just have to give a shout out to my cousin, Tommy. Tommy, Tommy. Is over there. Tommy! He is, Tommy the, he's my shadow. He takes care of me because I won't remember as we got lost today. I need a Tommy. We got lost here getting here, so. But uh, back to the film, I just have to say that everybody was wonderful. And I had a great admiration of Bill Benenson, Tony Bill, and uh, John Bailey, who uh, was the incredible cinematographer, Richard Halsey. Yes, uh, and so we're talking about some incredible, incredible cast members and and people who put this project together. The art director's name was Jackson Degobi. Yes, he created the Jackson. interiors of the houses. That man was such a talented artist. How the set for Boulevard Nights, the, the home was a set, it was a stage. But when you walked into my room, you had to step down a couple of steps. It was every detail was on the walls, you know, and the, everything. Everything was in that room was so beautiful. All the posters, the chest of drawers. That man was really, really talented, and he put everything he had, just like everybody else did, his best work into Boulevard Nights. Well, I have to say, going back to your first question, uh, I am very happy and very proud that I had the opportunity to work with these four people here. Uh, Martha and I had a great rapport. I, I couldn't have asked for a better leading lady. Uh, as you know, Danny is an incredible. I you didn't remember anything. Well, <laughs> oh, you he know that's a that. you bringing up uh, bringing up Martha Dubois. From what I understand, this is your first film. Is that right? Yes, and like other first times, I remember everything. <laughs> oh. So, what did you remember, uh, Martha? Well, it was very interesting because the last time I saw Richard, we had a little grouping of, of where the film was screened. In fact, you were there, Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And I remember distinctly, to just give you an anecdote, distinctly auditioning for this with him. Because, you know, as, as casting a role for a film goes, there are always several people in the mix until they finally decide. Well, I tested, and I know I did or I'm out of my mind, with two other guys plus Richard. He has no memory of this. Give you an idea how much of an impact I had on him. Right? So, but now so, you're linked for 40 years, cinematically linked yes. for, for eternity now. Well, yes, obviously yes. it happened because we did the film, obviously. And there was chemistry. But you know, the, it, Honestly speaking though, it being my first experience, it was the first thing I ever did out of the gate. I mean the first thing. I had been a student and studying for, intensively for quite a few years. And then when the movie came along, I remember all the firsts about it, up to and including the casting director, uh, a lady by the name of Vivian McRae, who just fought tooth and nail for my getting the role. That's why it's so clear to me, uh, having tested with Richard and two other guys, but uh, we got it. The chemistry was wonderful. We got along famously, as he said. The rapport was great. And uh, even a couple of times, you know, it being my first time on a set with camera and and uh, the lights art and lights and all that, it's still daunting because you're learn you're getting your legs your first go around. And I never forgot one scene in the bathroom when I'm cleaning up some parts to his face because he was you know, beaten up a bit. And I couldn't get the angle in my mind aligned and he kept, he was giggling. Do he you remember his, he this? His, 
No, he cut his no, ear no. under the car. He cut his ear under the car. That's right. And that's right. But he, kept, he helped me just get that uh, crossing the access properly in my mind so that I knew camera right, camera left. Because that takes a little time your first time out. Richard had and a lot of experience. But before more than you, more than me, we were newcomers. Yes. So he. But I got the and introducing credit. Yes, you did. I was happy that you got it. But Daddy, Richard you took us both under his wing is the point I was trying to make. Yeah. And got us along for our first time experience. But you had done a movie called Cuba uh, right before Boulevard Nights. No, I did it after. Boulevard Nights was my Cuba first Cuba came film. after, so Boulevard yeah. Nights was your first film as well. Yeah. What was that experience in the process of when you, did you direct, did you audition directly with Michael Pressman, who was the director, or would they go through casting? How, it how all many started, callbacks? It all started with Vivian McCray, the casting director. She was incredible. I had an afro. I didn't know anything about games, or I don't even know what the words in the script meant. I was so, just not from that world. But I was a big James Dean fan. And when I read the script, it reminded me of Rebel Without a Cause, but like the LA version. And I, I thought, well, I'm a James Dean fan. That, I like this part, you know, this is a good little part right here. Because wow. he was kind of all over the map, you know, he's funny, he's sad, he's pissed off, he's angry. What was, for all of you, what was the most uh, difficult, were there any difficult days on set in, in, in capturing the authenticity of, of the environment of that time? And this is 1979, you look at it, it feels like 1979 is still looking 78 will be shot in the summer. 78, 78. okay. In a hot summer. Well, the hard part for me was every time I had to kiss Marta, I had to make it real. I had to make it feel. <laughs> oh. Is that what you were talking about? Uh, yeah, so oh, sure. sure. Every time I turned should. around, they were obviously he did time. remember some things, Marta. You remember something. I'm like, how many kisses are they putting yeah, in this movie? <laughs> you know, you know, when when we were on the boulevard and we had that magnificent shot where you got the, the the crane going up with the camera. And, and you see that shot of all the cars lined up. I remember the week, was it a week we were there shooting? Yeah. yeah. We were there for a week, two weeks. And I remember, uh, it was, for me it was daunting because um, being a female and then working till midnight it seemed at times. Till so, so the sun came up. In a crazy area, I remember being disallowed because I had to have security from walking alone because of the gang situation and all that stuff, I could have gotten hurt. That was really new for me. That was really uh, something I had to pay attention to. And so I remember that clearly. And then we had scenes along the way where after they have their altercation and he gets out of the car and then he comes chasing me and we have this long scene together because I'm disgusted with the direction he's going. I mean. That whole time was all, um, it, it was tense. Not only because of the story, at least I remember tension, but because of the reality of the streets. You know what I'm saying? So I remember that vividly. How has it, it been for you guys? I want to start with Bill and just go all the way down because they, we are talking 40 years now and we have this kind of response to this screening and there are going to be other screenings of Boulevard Nights. You know, we're trying to get this uh, preserved in the Library of Congress uh, at the end of this, I'll explain to you all how you can do that. But we're going to get this reserved in the Library of Cong Congress. We've already started a petition, and you all can help in doing that. Especially if you go to Richard's page, or Boulevard Knight's page, or my page, Kenneth Castillo, or even Danny de la Paz. Uh, you'll find all the information you need to, to put this, uh, to preserve this film in the Library of Congress. But what does it mean to all of you? Because there was some criticism at the very beginning when you guys opened. And as this has gone and played and, and as cross generations, what does it mean to you to see this, this turnout for this incredible film after all these years? Bill. Well, first I want to say that in memories or thinking about the production, Martha was absolutely right about the shoot on Whittier Boulevard where we closed off Whittier Boulevard for probably 10 blocks and we had maybe 50 cars, uh, low riders, that we had to have drive by and we didn't know how to do it. The production manager couldn't do it. And we were out there with the biggest mess 
I've ever had on my hands practically. And I too was a first time producer. I, you know, I was stupefied as to what to do to untangle this giant mess. <laughs> and we, we then had the head of, of physical production at Warner Brothers, the their production manager, come in and he handed out numbers and he, he sorted it out. But this was a new undertaking for all of us. And I think we had the spirit of we were doing something new, which, in correct, which was correct. It was new for all of us, new territory and a new subject matter. And I am to this day thankful for the opportunity I had to be able to participate in this project. Fantastic. How about for you? Well, my name is Bobby Rodriguez. I'm the trumpet soloist on the movie. Yeah. Well, you guys all know that trumpet. So I represent Lalo Schifrin here today because Lalo was the man who wrote all the music, the great composer, arranger Lalo Schifrin. Lalo called me up and said, I heard about you and I think we want to use you on a movie. And I said, I'm a virgin. I never played on a movie before. <laughs> so, I played him a song over the telephone that I had recorded. He said, surprisingly, that is sort of like the theme song. And I went to his home, we talked about the music. He hooked me up with Tony Ortega, another East LA Roosevelt graduate. I'm a Salesian graduate, by the way. So are we. And um, I remember the very first Date, the very first recording session, the movie was already made to some degree, and we were watching the monitors, and here I was, playing my little flugelhorn, after coming off the road with the Brothers Johnson for four years, and I had an orchestra behind me, I had Lalo Schifrin on the podium, and he says, are you ready? And I thought, yes, but not really, but I'll try. So I gave it my best. And about three quarters of the way through the main theme, I messed up. Lalo came off the podium, said, come here. <clears throat> it's okay. We'll try it again. Yeah. He gave me the option and the confidence and the pat on the back. He said, you can do this. We had the next take, and that's what the movie is based on. Yeah. I remember the, uh, the evening recording session with George Benson. George didn't want lights in the recording studio, so nobody ever saw him. <laughs> and these are artists, you know, they're very particular people. We never saw George Benson. He came in, you could hear him, you knew it was him, you could hear him sing, play, and then that's a wrap, session's over, and George walks out the door. We had about four sessions for the music, for the score. Unbelievably wonderful talent was in that room, starting, of course, with the composer, Lalo Schifrin. This evening is in, incredibly important to all of us here who have grown up in East LA, who know the concept, who have lived some of this movie. We know this, and I'm very proud to be part of it. I feel yeah. great. Yeah. Now you have to talk about your experience on uh, just having us all this. Can I say something just to interview Absolutely. Daniel? Okay, when I was asked to play the part, I told you earlier that I, I wasn't I wasn't really familiar with that lifestyle, right? I didn't know too much about it. So they got me together with homeboys that were, you know, really from the barrio. And this is one of them, Daniel Alvarez. They called him Chaco at the time. Yeah, we'll start about that. These homeboys... These, these homeboys were... I, at first I found them intimidating by the way they dress, the, the, the way they work. Cause, I was, you know, kind of a softie compared to these guys, but you know, after a while, they started seeing the way I was and the way I worked, and they started respecting me, and I started seeing them as human beings. And lo and behold, we didn't have the best relationship. But I am so grateful for what this man shared with me about his life and his homeboys, what they shared with me about their lives, because it was because of them and their influence on me that I was able to have an understanding of the reality of the character and the the environment the character lives in. So I will always, always be eternally grateful. When you look at and you love that performance, of, these guys are what made that performance. Richard and his guidance, being a veterano, but these guys. So I want him to say a little bit of um, something from his perspective as being a, a homeboy, the real thing on the set.
you were shaking, Daniel, you were shaking your head when, when Bill was talking about the, the, the on Whittier and, and all the cars on Whittier. I saw you shaking your head. Do you remember that day? I'm used to it. I, I knew it was Whittier blew up. That's my car out there. You know, I, for, they were, listen, they were, they were afraid of Whittier Boulevard. That was my environment, born and raised in East L.A. You know, the only problem I ever had was, Danny didn't know how to be a total right. <laughs> God, isn't that the truth? But he got the gist of it. And, and I remember one of the things the producers and directors used us for, us real guys, was guidance. I remember him getting scared of the tattoo guy. And I said, we don't do that. No matter if you're scared, you still look at him like you want to kick his ass. <laughs> and, and, you know, I just know these things from being raised in East LA. I, I, I didn't I didn't fear the fact of being on Winter Boulevard. I didn't fear the fact of being, that was my life. And I have to say, as a filmmaker, that's part of why this, this movie resonates, because of the authenticity and the care that the studio took in reaching out to, to Daniel and, 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 like, and helping Danny De La Paz with, this, with an actor like Danny De La Paz to, to communicate these characters. And you know, for me, what resonated the most was the relationships between the brothers. And I think that is something that we all have, have a connection to, whether it's with nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, it was the genuineness of the relationship. And that doesn't happen when the, when the studio's putting money that they actually did their work and making sure that, that they were authentic in their storytelling. And um, that's to me the main thing with any type of, of Latino film and why certain films just continue to play on and on. Right, Danny? Back in that era, Rick, uh, Richard was the perfect guy to play the role of the car club guy. The long hair, uh, you know, the lower car, the disco guy. That, that's what it was back then. You were either a total or you were a disco guy. He was a disco guy. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it was, um, I wanted to say, um, you know, when, when I got asked to do this, I reached out to the director, Michael Pressman. He couldn't be here today, but he did send me an email and said, please give my personal best to the cast. They are wonderful people, and it was a very special experience for all of us. I'm looking forward to just sending him pictures of tonight and letting him know, as a filmmaker, the work that he did and how it resonated. We got we got lucky getting Bill here as a producer as well, and getting all these cast members. Danny, yes. Can we hear something from Roberto? He played Please, Joe please, Lee. Roberto, you're getting quiet over there. Well, I was just I was waiting for my turn. <laughs> you can't uh, do that with actors. Well, you know what I found interesting is that this was a first for a lot of people on this stage. It was my first movie too. Yes, it was. This is how I broke in. And uh, and I you know I, I came from the method school of acting I was like really methody and I remember that that scene uh, underneath the bridge where Danny and I you know kind of come face to face and I really wanted to do the stunt I wanted to do the stunt where I get where I get my ass kicked and I told I went up to Mike and I said Mike I, I can do the stunt. I can do this. No, 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 no. We got a stunt guy. He's going to do the stunt for you. And I was like, oh, fuck, man. <laughs> I wanted to do it myself. So anyway, so they, they brought him in. I forget his name. Uh, you remember? Uh, oh, yeah, I guess. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Remember? Don't ask him. Uh, it, it'll come to me later. But but anyway, so, so they bring in my stunt guy. They got him dressed as me. And I'm standing on the side. And they go, action! And it started, and they started to really fucking kick this guy. They, they kicked the shit out of him. I mean, they really kicked, I mean, they, they had some homeboys, they had homeboys who were getting paid, and they gave them a little stunt, kind of, uh, you know. Uh, 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 Again, that's it, that authenticity I was talking about. That was about. the authenticity. And I was watching, I was going, mother. And they're so glad that. <laughs> that, 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 that I didn't, you know, become this, a stunt guy too. But, uh, but it was, uh, and I have to say, you know, Richard was a mentor. I mean, he he took all of us first time under his wing and and protected us and and kind of he just, you know, he's, you're you're a lovely, caring man. I love you. You Richard. you taught me how to look for the lights. I remember that. Well, because he, he was the pro. He had done so much stuff. Up, and if anybody would point. know where the light was, 
Richard. I have to Where's say, say about, about, about Richard. He knows where it's at. Yeah, about Richard Nieves has also been an, an incredible support of, of a lot of Latino talent yes. filmmakers, such as myself. And it's, I, 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 I saw Boulevard Nights a long time ago, and to call, be able to call him my friend and also a supporter of my work uh, has been a true honor for me to be here. Uh, he's a very generous man, and, and as always, all these great people that contributed to the film. We have a couple of minutes, and I just want to take one question from the audience. And you were the first one up. What's up, guys? You guys were making the movie. Did any of you think that the, the, the fame that and long-lastingness of the movie would come to be what it is today? He said that for all of us making the movie, did we ever think that it would lead to this one day, that the film would become so time. beloved and last such a long time? I know I can speak for myself and say I didn't. You know, I, I, I just want to say real quickly, no, in answer to your question, I never dreamed that the, it would have this longevity. But since this is such a group of people for so many uh, where it was a first, it was also the first of its kind, was it not? And even though it got the criticism that it did, it was, in my opinion, the best of its kind. The reason I loved the story and my character in particular, Shady, with everything that goes on in that film, the violence, uh, the trauma in the family, the loss of life, the consequences. In my opinion, great storytelling without consequences is meaningless. The consequences of the behaviors of each and every one of those people in that film that resulted in the way that it did is what, for me, makes the film timeless. And in my opinion, that's one of the reasons why it does uphold, why it lasts as long as it does, because it resonates year after year, you know, time after time with people and with audiences. And I'm so grateful to have been a part of it. Thanks to you guys for loving me. I have to uh, really uh, give a shout out to all the low riders. Then, yeah. yes, yes. Now, it, that film symbolizes uh, the arts, the art uh, of creating something that we all appreciate today that you can see right there and, and, and touch. These people are so artistic and uh, mechanically, uh, uh, well, not inclined, but their expertise in putting these beautiful vehicles together. I think that is a testimony to this film that low riding has just increased uh, tenfold. And I just want to give a, a hand to those low riders that are out there. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And all my friends from Houston, Texas and from Japan that are here today, thank you all so much for being here. Yeah. Yeah. So right. the the Dukes. Here we go. You guys. And we know what, we'll take one last question. You got a question about it. Can I, can I say one thing? Yes, sir. Excuse me. Just about the low riders and the experience, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, those cars are iconic American classics. It fits into a genre of the creation that would equal anything in an art gallery. Yes. And we celebrated that achievement both aesthetically and the mechanical you know genius of the people who made the cars jump even and that is something that was ignored or not appreciated and it's part of the legacy that Richard is talking about of this film has the culture that had not been appreciated or ever shown to the American public the way we were able to do it and we were all first timers in this in many ways, including I have a scene where I'm a doctor at the end and I say that, well, I'm not going to give it away, but this will, <laughs> but this will, well, you've probably all seen it, but uh, this was a, a first time for all of us in many ways and I'm incredibly appreciative to have been involved in the process. Long live the Gypsy Rose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and thank you, Tierra. Yeah, and, and you. Uh, wrap up. I'm trying to wrap up. We have to thank Plaza for doing this. Thank you so I have to thank Emmanuel Martin for, um, we, want, we want to start the movie, but they will be here to take pictures still. This cast will be here. Yeah, I cut them off. Okay, no problem. Let's hear it, let's hear it real quick.
Oh, exactly. What happened to part two? You know what? There are some really beautiful ideas for a part two. The only thing is that Warner Brothers owns the rights, so we have to approach the right people to make it happen. But and I do believe, honestly, that it is possible to do something very evocative and beautiful that, let's say, echoes Boulevard Nights, absolutely. And, but has the same good feeling about it. So but I have, it's not an impossibility. Absolutely. I want to read this review, and, I, and this is just a testament to, to all of you out there. And I, you know, I have to thank Jimena Martin for, who, who, for inviting me to moderate and, and be able up here, and, and the honor that I've had of being up here. We love you, Let's bring her out here real quick and say hi. She's one of the organizers of this event. That's the lady that made it happen right there. Yeah. And I have to say, when this movie came out, you guys all know Variety. Variety gave this movie a really bad review, and here we are. Here we exactly. Here we are, 40 years later, because of all of you. You guys are the power. <laughs> You guys are the power in supporting Latino talent and Chicano talent and going to our movies and supporting us and you guys have that power and I thank you so much for supporting this film and other Latino films. I want to thank Richard. Richard's inspiration, his support, that they would bring all the cast together to bring the Gypsy Rose and just to put it together with Danny and then the Car Club, uh, Dukes, um, Imperials, they work for you guys. We wouldn't have this amazing event. And thank you so much for joining us. Please come back. We're absolutely free. We're here for the community. Please come back and visit again. Thank you, Richard. What is and what else? What is what else is August 16th. Uh, come back and visit August, 6, uh, August 19th. I'm sorry. August 19th. Um, Deanna will be back with us. We're going to have Aztec dancers. We're going to have the crew here. It's going to be another beautiful night of Chicano Power. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's watch the movie.